All right. Good afternoon, everybody. We are about a month away opening day for soccer. So we are going to continue with some player interviews up until kickoff on December, uh, September 7th. December 7th is my birthday, actually. Um, today we have seen our Tr Trinity Maloney from Brick, the goalie from Brick Township, who's been starting since freshman year, since day one. Thank you, Trinity, for joining me today. Thank you. Um, so first, let's just, you know, you started since you were, you know, freshman. First question I'm going to ask, have you always played goalie? Yeah, I've played goalie since I was like seven. So I started soccer when I was like four or five. And then that's just like little league things. So they never had goalkeepers. But yeah. as soon as we went into like the bigger nets, I always wanted to be in that. What attracted you to being a goalie? Because it takes a special person to be a goalie. I actually am not quite sure. I just wanted to be a net because nobody else offered to be a net. And then I just realized that I liked it. Dive, dive all over the place? <laughs> not when I was younger. I just kind of stood there and I hoped the ball didn't go in. But now I do. <laughs> did you play any other sports when you were younger? I did gymnastics and cheer when I was younger. Okay. And what made you focus on soccer compared to, you know, dancing or cheer? Um. So when I got into the middle school, I did cheerleading. And that was mostly just, like, school-related cheerleading. But gymnastics, my parents told me I had to pick one. <laughs> so I ended up going with soccer. Okay. Are you happy with that decision? Yeah, very happy. <laughs> Now, I know you have a couple younger sisters, and um, one of them was on the team with you last year, and is it very competitive with you and your sisters? It's, it's always competitive. I have an older sister, too, and it was always competitive when she played, too. She played soccer, too? Yeah, she played for Howell. Okay. How, much, how, how old is she? Uh, she is now 20, and she's going to turn 21 in a few months. Did you did you ever go to her for like advice, like when you were getting ready to play in high school? Not necessarily, because she quit right before high school and focused on like her academics, and she's like really good at art too. Okay. How about your younger sister? Does she go to you for advice? Um, not necessarily advice, but like we like to train together and go to the fields and shoot the ball. She plays goalie as well, doesn't she? Yeah. Okay. That could be good for Brick, you know, next year. Yeah. Been up. It's always tough right to find. Right now she plays on the field. Okay. It's very tough to find goalies after a good one graduates. That's the number one thing coaches always look for once a kid graduates. How am I going to replace the goalie? How have your parents helped you along the way? Uh, they never – Uh, whenever I wanted to go to extra things, they always let me. And they always encouraged me. And after, like, a bad game, they would go over, um, like, the positives, but they would also, like, go over the negatives, which I think is good. They didn't just tell me, oh, you played amazing every time. They were very honest. And I feel like that helped in my development. Yes, it never – you're never going to get better if all you ever hear is the stuff you do good. You need to yeah. know, to, know to things. And there's a way to present that. You just don't – ram it down a kid's throat saying, you know, you did this wrong. I saw a YouTube clip, no, Instagram clip. Instead of saying the kid played good or bad, ask your kid what did they learn from that game? What would you have done different in the game? Which is a good one. Exactly. And that way it gets you thinking too what happened throughout the game instead of somebody just telling you. So, it, you know, it gets your mind working a little bit, which was, you know, it was a pretty interesting clip I saw that. Growing up, who were your role models growing up? So my first ever role model in within like the soccer program was Claire Headings. Uh, you may not know her because she's not really from around here, but she used to play at NYCFC. And then in middle school, I trained with her a lot because she moved down to Cedar Stars. And she was always my role model because she always came to extra training sessions and even though like I was so much younger than her and obviously not as good as her she was so positive and always wanted to help everyone around her to get as like to make everyone better 
that's good. You know, you didn't pick a famous person either that I just <laughs> know, like Hope Solo or, or yeah. you know, uh, who's, who's the goalie? Casey Murphy, is she the goalie now? Yeah. Casey Murphy. Well, Alyssa Nair is a goalkeeper for women's team right now, but I know mm-hmm. who Casey Murphy is. Yeah. Have you watched any of these World Cup games? Yeah, I watched um... – I just recently watched the one at three in the morning against Portugal. Yeah, yeah these times are not very good. Not, yeah, they're not. <laughs> to watch. Um, they got lucky escaping with a tie. They yeah, did, so, especially yeah. from that post. Yep. Yep. I saw, it, I saw the highlights. And uh, that post cost Portugal a chance to advance. It did, but it saved us. Yeah. Uh, now, you know, let's talk, you know, club soccer a little bit do you remember you know and not when you were like a little little kid you know where you run around in packs but when you started like on a club team or a travel team do you remember who your first coach was yeah so I had two um his their names were Matt Linquist and Jay Horvath which is okay. Taylor Horvath's and the twins father yes. and then I don't know if you know who Lila Linquist is she's like a really good lacrosse player from point and that's her dad how did they make you better or, you know, what did they teach, you know, teach you or did you develop from, you know, playing for them? Um, I don't necessarily know, like, anything technical, but when I did move from the team, they were always, like, really positive and, like, always supported my decisions on where I was going and didn't hold any grudges against me. Who's your current club? Uh, John Jenks. Well, did you ask for coach or the club? Oh, I'm at PJ South now. Okay, and John Jenks is your coach. Yes. How has he helped you? You know, take your game to the next level. Uh, definitely mindset. He's very serious, and when we're in training, we're locked in. When we go out to big tournaments like California, we're locked in. Where it's not like a vacation. <laughs> yeah, pretty much that. Yeah, I could see how traveling, especially some of the areas, San Diego, or I could see that being people getting a little vacation mindset out there, but you're out there to do do work. Now, you always play goalie, but, you know, if you were on the field, what position would you want to play? Uh, I would definitely want to play in the midfield. I like um, playing on one of the outsides, and I can use my left foot, so, like, left midfield, whatever. It's fun when I actually get to play in the field. We'll talk, we'll talk about how, you, you know, you did pretty much all the free kicks last season. So, we'll get to, when we talk about when we talk about high school, we'll, we'll bring that up. So, we're, we're going to switch over to high school now. When you were entering as a freshman, what goals did you set for yourself? Well, I knew I was coming in to compete against two other very good goalkeepers. So my goal was basically to just work harder than everyone and get a starting spot or even get to play in one varsity game because I wasn't sure because it was my first time. So when you made varsity and, you know, you were named um, the starter, how did how did that make you feel? Uh, very accomplished because I knew I worked really hard to get to that point. And I also had to, like, make new connections with teammates. And it was, like, very new. Were there any upperclassmen that helped you along the way your freshman year? Yeah. um, Reese Beggs and Gianna Fergney. I still actually hang out with them now when they come back from college. But uh, I knew them when I was younger because they played with my older sister. And then when she quit, I didn't really speak to them. And then I came in and I realized I'd be playing with them, which it was I was very honored to be able to play with them for my freshman year, and it was just a great environment to be in and a great team to be a part of. Yeah, I think Reese's season's probably starting in a couple weeks, right? Yeah, uh, they're starting soon. Yeah, I I was lucky I had Reese on her senior year, October, yeah, yeah senior year. So I always enjoyed watching watching her play. On, on the field, very, very fast player. Yes, very okay. fast. Yeah. <laughs> now, your freshman year was, that was COVID year, right? If I remember. Yeah, unfortunately. Did you, 
Yeah. Did you think the season was going to happen? I did think that the senior the season was going to happen. Uh, there was just a lot of like rules and mandatory things we had to do. Like before practice, I'd always have to fill out this questionnaire. If I had a headache, I wasn't allowed to practice. It was just really restricted. Now, how, you know, how did it affect you mentally, you know, because you never know when a game was going to be canceled. You know, you could be on the bus on your way to school, on the way to a game, and then all of a sudden you find out somebody from the opposing team came in contact with the COVID, somebody with COVID. How did it affect you mentally, or did you just, you know, take it one day at a time? Well, mentally, I think I learned, like, you can only control what you can control. And I feel like that's helped me with a lot of other things in life. So that's a positive that came out of it. Yes. Um, you know, you kids definitely you learned how to adjust quickly, which is something you, you know, you got to do when you're in college as well. Um, when I started doing these podcasts was during COVID. And when I interviewed those high school seniors, I said, you know, because everybody, every school had a different thing, whether you got your assignments early in the morning and then you yeah. know, or, or so you had to go on Zoom or Google Classroom or whatever. Everything was different. And that's kind of how college is. Everything could be different. Every class could be a little bit different. Uh, last question for your freshman year. You know, your team made it to the pod finals and you played a very, very good Cranford team. What did it mean, you know, just as a freshman, you know, your team advancing that far and getting to the finals? Um. Well, going into the playoffs, it was very – I was really nervous. It was my first year, and I didn't want to let anyone down because I was in the back. Um, but I was just really grateful that I got to, like, be in the final with those seniors at that time. And even though, like, we didn't have – we didn't have the best showing and we played a very good team, yeah. I still I still remember them to this day, and they were so nice too. Like, they deserved that win. But um, it was just great to be able to go through with the seniors that I had my freshman year. And we had a really good season. We played against really good teams. Yeah, that was um, – Cranford was very good. And, you know, Allentown's always – you know, I feel like Brick plays them every single year in state playoffs. You know, you played them just, um, the following year. I believe the following year. I'm sure – I think – Or the year before that. Penalty kick. I think so. Yeah. It was very um, a weird time. Yeah. And, I mean, you played, you know, you beat Brick Memorial twice that year, which, you know, the crosstown rivalry is always, always tough. No matter how good one team is and how bad one team might be going through, that game's always a yeah. hard sport, tough game. Um, Hang on. I want to switch to your sophomore year. Now, Brick Township has kind of been on like a little bit of a rebuilding year the last two years, you want to say? Um, just talk about, you know, let's talk about your junior year. I always see a big improvement in players from sophomore to junior year. What was something you wanted to improve on yourself before you entered your junior season? Uh, I think it was like self-reflecting because freshman year I was really hard on myself and – I would go into depth with a lot of mistakes that I did. And then going into junior year, I was just like, sophomore year, I kind of like drowned myself in my thoughts with every little thing I did. So junior year, I wanted to improve that. And just like, if I made a mistake, move on from it and learn from it. What did it mean, you know, when the coach, you know, I don't know what part of the season, it might have been all season, you know, you started taking basically all the free kicks, no matter where they basically were yeah. on, on the field. What did that mean to you that the coach, you know, trusted you and that, you know, and trusted that you would get back quick enough, you know, when it was on the other side of the 50? Yeah, I mean, he had me starting to take them, like, during um, practice, just, like, randomly take them. I thought it was just, like, oh, she was in net yesterday. We don't have to have her in net right now, like, low recovery. But then it started turning into me take them during the game. And um, I think they just have a lot of trust in my accuracy and where I place the ball. And, 
most of the time I can put it where I want to go. And then I just turn around and I sprint. Well, I don't turn around. I don't turn <laughs> from the ball, but I do sprint back. You know, I was at a couple of the games and, you know, your accuracy, you know, it's pretty good, you know, when you're taking it from 40, 50 out, you know, getting it into the box and giving your chance, team a chance to score. What, you know, you know, looking at the score was one of the issues the team had last season was getting the ball in the net yeah. because there was a lot of hard fought games against a lot of, you know, good teams. I mean, you took Brick Memorial, who was ranked in the top 10 all season, to double overtime. We did. Um, you, Howell, it didn't go overtime, but they only defeated one nothing. They were, you know, basically top five all season and they made it to the short conference finals. So there were, there's some good signs your team had last year is just, you know, you need, like a lot of teams that struggle to get wins, it's just that person, they don't have that person they can rely on to put it in the back of the net. Do you think that's something you could see changing a little bit this upcoming season? You know, just have you know, somebody solid that could get it, get it in the net for Yeah, right. I mean, um, another senior, Desiree, she's been up top uh, for like the past year or so. And recently she's been working really hard. Like after practice, we'll go up. Her, me, my sister, and Amaya will go up and we'll like train extra on the track. But um, I think I think she'll do good this year and be able to get in the back of net. She's training hard. One more question from last season. What – it's more, you know, you brick versus brick memorial, brick township. What is it about that that always brings out the best in both teams? I think just pride. Like, <laughs> everyone goes to watch at least part of it and – we don't want to just get blown out and make it a boring game, or we don't want to blow out someone else and make it a boring game. <laughs> but um, it's just always a good game, and even if we think that like we're not going to do as good, I feel like we all just try our best because no one wants to look like they're not as good as they usually are. Yeah, and hometown, you know, you know, you, you yeah. want bra bragging rights, right? That's the key thing, bragging, bragging rights. Yeah. For this upcoming season, what are some personal goals you have for yourself? Some personal goals? Yeah. Um, I think just having, like, the best time that I can with it since it's my last year and, like, the ma make the most out of it. What is something or a couple of things you could give me that you hope to pass down to the underclassmen? Definitely – to make the most out of it again. <laughs> they only have like a certain amount of time until they're a senior as well. And then it's all going to crash down on them that they're a senior. And I definitely wish that I had more fun with my high school season. Even if like, even if we were really good or like not as good as the lot other year. Yeah, Cause it goes by quick. It does. Well, I feel like it was just yesterday I was watching you as a freshman playing and that your senior year is about to start yes. ready for some rapid fire questions real quick i'll try to rapidly answer them <laughs> <laughs> all right what is your favorite movie i thought this was gonna come up but like i wait what is my favorite movie i'd say probably moana okay i've never heard that how about tv show TV show? Yeah. I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, I'd probably say The Summer I Turned Pretty. I've I've been on a, a nice little binge on that one recently. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Oh, it's like it's like newer. It came out last year. Netflix or? Uh, Amazon Prime. Okay. How about favorite school subject? Science. Science. Your favorite number? Uh, one, but my club number is zero now because my friend JoJo took it. <laughs> okay. How about um, something you enjoy doing in your free time, like when you're not at practice? Um, I love going to the beach where I love tumbling. Tumbling? Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, before a game, what is your go-to song to get you 
pumped up or in the zone for the game? I always listen to Run This Town, um, Off the Lights, and Don't Blame Me by Taylor Swift. <laughs> Last question. I kind of just started asking this one. When your playing career is over, would you would coaching or training be something you would? Yeah, I w- I would train like younger kids. I um started helping like training younger kids a year ago or so, and I have fun with it. And it's like I used to be like that. <laughs> That's good. All right, let's talk about your future real quick. You know, you're looking at colleges. What? What type of college are you are you looking for? What do you look or what are you looking for in a college? Um, not I don't think necessarily I've been like looking for things as much. I like I go and I see if I like the environment and if it feels like that's somewhere I like could be, then I decide if that's what I like. Yeah. And also, I like meeting people and seeing if it's, like, an environment that I could grow in and be myself at the same time. Does location matter or any of that or no? Uh, I'd prefer the East Coast. East Coast. That's good. That's good. Um, do you – so do you know what your major is going to be or – I want to go into sports marketing. Okay. And after college, what do you hope to use sports marketing – and working for a franchise or yeah I want to work in I want to work within a team I've always loved like being involved in sports and with my sisters we'd always get invited to like these openings or like events and it was so much fun to be a part of yes you need a lot of stuff with the Red Bull right yes yeah that's, that's good um a friend of mine was involved with marketing for MLS for for quite a bit he started actually interning in college and then they were they hired him for a couple couple events like all their all-star weekend events and stuff to do marketing and stuff and he he loved it now i think he works for kent state university i think maybe i don't know but yeah he's that he studied basically the same field you know sports marketing and stuff like that yeah all right this is going to be the last question what advice would you give your younger self? My younger self would to be to persevere and mainly just be myself and not try to fit in, fit in as much. Because I feel like my freshman year, I kind of like, not my freshman year, my sophomore year, kind of like started veering away from my soccer life because I was like, I want to be a normal high school student athlete (laughs) but ever since I realized it's not like my path I've been going on the like the right I don't know how to put it but I feel like I tried fitting in too much and I realized that wasn't for me so now I've just been like school soccer and people that I have in my circle be yourself yes don't 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 change exactly Uh, all right all right, Trini, thank you for taking time out today. Thank you for having me. No problem. I look forward, definitely. I can't wait for the season to start. And Bricks in that, they're, they're playing August 12th, right? And that Brick Memorial, the yeah, the festival. It, yeah, it's at Trump yeah. Point. It, yes, he does it. I got to get there early because there was no parking when I got there last year. I'm just going to have my mom drop me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had they had all the soft, that soft, like four softball games going on. Yes, I, think, I remember. I think Pee Wee football was going on somewhere, and lacrosse was going on, and like somewhere there. It's a gorgeous complex, but there was way too much. I think I parked like actually on like the sidewalk somewhere. My my yeah. little my, my plus like the schools had something going on too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I think there was like another event that they changed the day. Yeah, it and was that like was not. Yeah, I think that's what Coach Caruso said. There was like something else going on that wasn't supposed to be going on. And that's why he was yeah. so proud. All right. Well, I wish the team luck this Thank season, you. and I'll I'll see you, I'll see you on the twelfth because I need to uh, get some look at at these teams to see to finish my top tens and my preseason list and all that. So, but thank you for taking time out and good luck this season.
Thank you. Hopefully I'll see you soon. You will. You will. Okay.